All right, you mentioned the neighborhood. Uh, I'll request my guests to stay with me a while longer. Uh, speaking of the neighborhood, let's talk a little bit about Pakistan, the country that uh, India has blamed uh, for giving support and sanctuary to these terrorist organizations. Pakistani reports say that there is anger and resentment in the army over Trump's uh, blandishments. The anger resonates all over the country and assures the establishment of public support. But cutting that tie with the United States will not be easy. The Pakistani political and bureaucratic Democratic elite have benefited from the U.S. connection. The Pakistani army has benefit, benefited from U.S. military aid and training for more than 50 years. The United States is Pakistan's largest trading partner and export market for its textile. Pakistan needs U.S. support to get cheap loans from international financial institutions. As far as the China connection goes, it has supplanted the U.S. connection in many ways. China is the biggest supplier of military equipment to Pakistan. It's promised $50 billion investment in the China-Pakistan economic corridor. Will make it Pakistan's biggest investor as well. China is Islamabad's big power buffer against Washington. But China is also a worry and at the same time a puzzle. Terrorism in Pakistan and Afghanistan worries China as well. Terrorists could infiltrate into China's Muslim majority. Xinjiang province, which uh, of course is inhabited by the Uyghur Muslims. China signed the BRICS declaration last September condemning the Haqqani network among other terror groups. Privately, China has told Pakistan to clean up its support of terror groups. The reports say Pakistan doesn't want to be pitted against the US in Afghanistan. The prospect of a US-India-Afghanistan nexus is worrisome, but the Reports also say the Pakistani establishment has shown little ability to control or influence the Taliban or the Haqqani network. Pakistan has not been able to get a Taliban commanders into peace talks. This may flow from the fact that the Taliban now control so much of the Afghan countryside and are able to bomb targets in Kabul at will. They have no incentive to talk. This contradicts earlier reports where uh, terror groups are counted as serving Pakistan's national interests. The weekend blast in Kabul and the attack on the Fahim Military Academy could well be a Pakistan response to uh, pressures by America. So that's really speaking uh, what the issue is at hand when it comes to Pakistan. Um, we'll talk a little bit further about India as well in a bit, but let me go across to uh, Michael Kugelman on that note. Michael, you know, the United States has already put Pakistan on notice. Uh, it has suspended military aid as well. And after these attacks in Kabul, the U.S. has stepped up that rhetoric on Pakistan. Do you expect any sort of immediate U.S. retaliation to that effect? Well, I'm not sure about immediate retaliation, but I think the fact that, uh, as I recall, several uh, U.S. citizens were killed in the uh, attack on the Intercontinental Hotel uh, some days ago suggests to me that the U.S. may accelerate um, its willingness to think about expanding the pressure tactic, so to speak, beyond an aid freeze. And I think we can all agree that, you know, an aid freeze in itself is not going to lead Pakistan to change its behavior. The U.S. has frozen aid to Pakistan before, and Pakistan did not change its, its calculus about how it deals with these groups on its soil. I think that, uh, you know, there certainly is the possibility that the U.S. could do additional things, such as uh, perhaps uh, slapping sanctions on uh, individual members of the Pakistani military that the U.S. believes to have ties um, to terrorism, something like that. But I think that, you know, th there is a constraint here. There is a conundrum for, for U.S. policy in that it really wants to increase the pressure tactics on Pakistan, and I imagine it will. But at the same time, you know, there are there are certain risks uh, for the United States. The Pakistan does not have many points, uh, tools of leverage that it can use, but it does have one in particular that it can wield, and that is its ability to close down these supply lines on its soil that the uh, U.S. forces use to access Afghanistan. Given how difficult the U.S war effort is in Afghanistan right now, you know, if Pakistan were to shut down those supply routes, that would really be quite devastating uh, for, for U.S. war fighting uh, efforts in Afghanistan. It would need to look at the alternate route in Central Asia, which could be used. It was used some years ago when Pakistan shut down its supply routes uh, that time, but it would be very difficult. So I think that the U.S. will want to go further, but I think that it may not 
it may not tighten the screws to the maximum effect i think it may it may it probably will not go so far as for example to uh designate pakistan as a state sponsor of terrorism that would be the nuclear effect but i think it's also an unlikely effect i think what we would need to look to in the coming uh weeks would be something a bit further down the scale so to speak so, such as putting sanctions on several on, on some members of the pakistani military or something along those lines but again we we really don't know i think the us us policymakers are even now trying to figure out what what the best way forward is i do think that they will take additional steps all right and of course the us has repeatedly uh, called out the haqqani network and that's interesting um, uh, mr yusuf zai if i can ask you this uh, you know the taliban has claimed credit for some attacks uh, isis has claimed credit for some others uh, the afghan uh, government though has uh, blamed the haqqani network for saturday's uh, ambulance suicide attack who do you think is behind these attacks and and is the possibility of a combine between the isis and taliban uh, you know a, a possibility when it comes to the situation in afghanistan no i don't think there is any collusion between the isis and the taliban they actually are dead against each other they have been fighting against each other taliban actually have lost some of their members to the isis so there is no love lost between the two i don't think there is any collaboration but you know who would be responsible it's very obvious Taliban have claimed responsibility for two attacks in Kabul the ISIS has claimed responsibility for one in Kabul and one in Jalalabad now who among Taliban which faction who has done this the Afghan government as usual is blaming the Haqqani network but that they have been doing since long you know but the Haqqanis they are part of the Taliban movement now and their leader Sirajuddin Haqqani is the deputy leader of the Afghan Taliban group. So I think you know even if the Haqqanis are involved it is not only the Haqqanis it is actually a collective a joint operation which is carried out by different people with different resources that is how it takes place it's not one faction one group this is mostly you know even in Pakistan when the TTP is carrying out attacks it's not only ttp it's also jamaat ul ahrar it is also isis so these could be joint operations by different taliban factions but the objective is always the same yes they have the same objective they actually you know even if they have differences i mean taliban factions they actually they they become united when they are uh, you know fighting the us or the afghan forces that has been their strategy All right Ambassador Abdali the United States has promised decisive action what exactly uh, do you think is supposed to be the action on the ground what are you hopeful of Well I mean there should be no distinction uh, when it comes to action uh, if we know of the sanctuaries if we know of the place where terrorism being nurtured then we should uh, we should uh, you know simply go against that place uh, therefore whoever it is uh, and i think by now it is so clear uh, the place where terrorism being nurtured the place which is where terrorism is tolerated and used against Af- afghans and international partners in afghanistan and elsewhere in the world in the region therefore uh, i think uh, it is really time otherwise uh, the whole resolve that we speak of globally will be at risk uh, of failure and at the same time the credibility of this uh, this uh, war against terrorism will be at risk if you don't see clear action against this menace uh, which 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 hits uh, at everyone uh, without any any distinction Fair enough. Ambassador Partha Sarthi, uh, please be patient with me. I've got a question specifically for you. Uh, it is about India's role in all of this uh, because uh, for our viewers, India doesn't have boots on the ground in Afghanistan. What it does have is a reservoir of goodwill. India's development assistance has helped to transform lives of ordinary Afghans. Small and large infrastructure projects such as uh, the 218 kilometer long Zaranj Delaram road helps movement of goods and services from Afghanistan to the Iranian border and electricity transmission line from uh, Pulle Khumri to Kabul the Afghan India friendship dam formerly a Salma dam in the Herat province is a hydroelectric and irrigation project the construction of uh, Afghan 
Afghanistan's pardon me, parliament building as well. That list is endless. Of late, India has signaled its intent to further raise its profile in Afghanistan. India is more open than before to boost the capabilities of Afghan armed forces. It has shared four, uh, pardon me, uh, it has uh, shared four uh, other uh, projects with Afghanistan in the future as well. So that gives you an idea of uh, India's uh, relationship with Afghanistan. Ambassador Partha Sarthi, um, do you feel that the U.S. pressure on India to put more boots uh, on the ground in Afghanistan is likely to go up given the events of January itself? I think it would be politically stupid for us to get involved because the Pakistanis will then convert this into a war between the Pashtuns and, and Kafirs. I don't know which, uh, politically it will be suicidal to send troops into Afghanistan. Yes, we are training them. Yes, we have provided them some, uh, some attack helicopters. But boots on the ground, uh, politically, uh, politically in, uh, it, it would not be... Uh, you know, you would have attention diverted from Pakistani assistance to the Taliban to an Indian presence in Afghanistan. So I think that's out of the question. The training should continue. Yes, if they want more equipment, uh, yes, we should provide it. But basically, I think we should work with like-minded countries who uh, are against this form of a Taliban-style extremism uh, to, as I said, Turn the squeeze on Pakistan. I mean, uh, Mr. Krugman says, yes, we can go up to a point, not beyond. Uh, this sort of wishy-washy thing is going to get us nowhere. Until the U.S. uses its clout to get its allies, including Japan, to join in. Pakistan is now squeezed for foreign exchange. Chinese don't provide that. They provide uh, loans on which they make profits at fairly exorbitant rates. In fact, I encourage Pakistan to go for more uh, Chinese, Chinese assistance because it's not, it'll have its own consequences. The fact is it is Western OECD aid that matters. That's one. Uh, two, I think uh, there are capabilities which I would not like to go into, which the US, the Afghans and others could use to raise the costs for Pakistan. The costs for Pakistan should be raised. I never forget that the Kandahar hijacking, right. which I was handling when I was in Islamabad, the ISI was working hand in glove with the Taliban. So let's not have any illusions on this. Um, above all, let us hope and pray that our Afghan brothers will get together, unite and present a united front. Uh, I think we are due, have uh, Afghan elections yes. this year for parliament. That, of Later course, is an important point for, uh, that uh, the, uh, is crucial to understanding these attacks but as well. Right, Good Ambassador. I, I, I apologize uh, for interrupting you. Uh, we're uh, plumb out of time on this segment. Uh, I want to thank all my guests, Ambassador Abdali, uh, uh, Mr. Rahimullah, Michael Kugelman, and Ambassador Partha Sati. Thank you all for joining us this evening and sharing your perspective with us.